What's quack a lack in there, Guardians? My name is Poe, and Professor P's back with another gun review inside the Taken King. You guys want to leave a comment down below? Let me know other guns you would like to see in the series, and perhaps yours can be chosen for a future episode. So we're going to be taking a look at the Trials of Osiris exclusive pulse rifle. This one right here is called the Reflection Sum, and to be honest, it doesn't add up to much. <laughs> Come on, was that you get it? It was a sum joke. It's add and. Come on, a little smile, maybe even a face bomb, some kind of a reaction, right? Okay, so, the gun on paper, statistically, it's absolutely incredible. It's in the same tier that so many people are flocking to, like the Villainy, the Nerwins, even the Red Death and No Time to Explain Exotics are in the same category as this weapon, same rate of fire, same damage output, so reliable inside Crucible, so dominating, to be honest. So why am I anti-reflection some? Let's first dive into its base stats. As you can see, it's a kinetic base damage pulse rifle. Coming in with an average rate of fire of 66. The impact is a bit above average at 14. The range is a bit above average at 43. Stability is near top of class at 71. And of course, we have a mediocre to low grade reload speed. But again, that's pretty awesome. Popping the hood on this thing, capable of doing 32 to the face cavity. Three bursts total, sometimes two depending on their toughness, and it can kill in .97 seconds, or you can actually trim a third of that off again if it gets to the two burst capabilities. 22 damage to the body and torso, possible for eh, maybe even three bursts in many occasions, doing a 1.16 second kill to the body. 360 round per minute fire rate, coupled with the 54% aim assist, which is kind of generous. 2.47 second reload speed, Pretty badass on us. On empty, it's 2.71. Looking at a 24 magazine capacity. So overall, statistically, as I said, on paper, this gun's got it going on, sister. It's looking good. The catch, though, is it shares the category with all of those other popular weapons. The villainy. You have a couple other things in the category. The Nerwins, which so easily rolls with great perks. Where do the flaws of this gun really, really poke its face out? Now, it's not at any fault of the gun itself. It's not like the gun is just built bad. It's not a great gun by any means. It's just that there are better options out there in the same category that can do what this gun does, but better. So why not use one of those? One of the two exotics, like the No Time to Explain or the Red Death, definitely, definitely favorites. May not have the stability or a couple of the other stats that this one has at its base core form, but it's also a very smart play. So, Bone, I see you talking so highly of this gun. Where's the flaws? It just doesn't add up. <laughs> okay, last one, I promise. I honestly like the gun, but I feel like the biggest thing that subtracts from its value is the fact that it just has predetermined perks. All the trial weapons have a set perk. Every one of these you run into are going to be the same thing. The only perk that ever changes on a trials weapon is the very last one. If you manage to roll in a depth version, you get the last resort perk on top. But for the most part, that final tier bubble is the only one that ever changes. And it has four potential rolls. And the rolls aren't half bad on this weapon, to be honest. But again, secret round, not really that great. Head Seeker, I've gone in detail before as towards why it's not that great of a perk. With Reactive Reload out of the mix... Anything else is just kind of meh. Third Eye is probably one of the best options you can have. But for the most part, that's the only randomization inside of this gun. Everything else is set in stone. And the army perk is just not that great. Sure, it's functional, but it's a C perk at best. Maybe a B. Some people like it, some people don't, but you can do a lot better. So the fact that you're stuck with that, you're stuck with some of these sites. And I'm not generally one of those guys that complains about the sites. But I really do not like the sights available on this weapon, but you're stuck with it. Unlike the Nerwins, which you can get different rolls and run across them in the wild with different perks. Not to mention the first Iron Banner sold a really, really good Nerwins with awesome perks available on it. Why go to this one? Why, when you have something like the No Time to Explain or the Red Death, why use this weapon? The Villainy, so popular amongst the community. Why this weapon? So as I said, it's, it's great on paper. It's an incredible, it's one of the most popular tiers of damage and impact and rate of fire combinations. I love what it's got going for it, but I do not like the fact that it's got forced perks and those perks honestly hurt it. With things like the Nerwins out there and all those other options available, why stick to something like this when you can do better? So yeah, make the right life decision and put this thing away. Infuse it for something. Honestly, there are better options out there. Only use it if you must. And if so, and if you are gonna use it, rock out injection mold on it too. So again, like I said, it's not that bad. But you can definitely do better. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the gameplay, be sure to subscribe. Take the plunge. It's free. And support the channel by leaving a like on the video. Have a good evening, guys. Take care.